Hello and welcome to this, a pilot episode of a new EDH gameplay series under the guise of the curious homunculus, a voracious little reader seeking to learn all that they can about the world of magic and of commander before entering it into their big book that you see in front of you now. The gameplay in this series is intended more as entertainment rather than as competitive primer and if you do have any comments and criticisms about the production of this video, what would make it easier to understand what was going on or why certain things are happening when they do, do leave them in the comments section below. As is traditional at this time, it is my duty to remind you that if you would like to see more of this style of content, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon so that you can know exactly when we upload these videos in the future. So by way of introduction to today's decks, we'll start in turn order with John's Grand Warlord Rada deck. Grand Warlord Rada is a two generic mana, a red and a green for a hasty elf warrior that whenever she or her creatures attack, they generate that amount of mana in either red or green. So John's strategy is to go wide with cards like Verdant Force to give him as much of a board presence as possible, and then to make these opponents generation of mana as difficult as possible with effects like mana barbs he's hoping to overwhelm the board by being the only one that can generate any mana amelie is running a general tazri deck general tazri is four generic mana and one white mana for a three four legendary human ally uh, whenever she enters the battlefield you can search your library for an am ally reveal it and tutor it into your hand essentially and then shuffle your library and she also has the ability for Wooburg to give all ally creatures you control plus x plus x to the end of the turn where x is the number of colors amongst those creatures um critically amelie will be looking to make use of that tutor ability as lot as much as possible throughout the course of the game um with and also with cards like seagate lawmaster get as much uh, value from having as many allies on the battlefield as possible she is running a number of graveyard recursion like say march from the tomb to be able to bring allies back again and again from her graveyard so I will be running my Sir Conrad the Grim deck, one of which I'm very fond of. He is three generic and two black mana for a 5-4 legendary creature that in no way looks like Sir Christopher Lee. And he has a whole wall of text and giving a number of conditions about when creatures either go into or come out of my graveyard causing damage to my opponent. So I'll be running cards a lot like Priest of the Forgotten Gods uh, in this deck to make me sacrifice cards, which then make my opponent sacrifice cards. Naturally, Dictator Erebos would be wonderful in this deck, but a little bit outside of that budget. And then also running cards like Mind Crank, so that when my opponents do um, take damage, they then have to discard more cards, which if they in turn are creatures, means they'll take more damage which means they'll have to take more discard more cards and hopefully i create some kind of endless loop where people are milling themselves constantly for damage um, it's a deck that flies quite low to the ground and sort of explodes out of nowhere towards the end particularly as my opponents start blaming each other when they top deck creatures to make everyone take damage even though it's me that's done it um, this deck is based off the fantastic Commander's Quarters, uh, Sir Conrad the Grim deck that Mitch put up. I have adapted it a fair amount in a way that hopefully Craig Van Shet would approve in that I've added a number of sources of infect damage like Grafted Exoskeleton to the deck uh, so to make that damage hopefully accelerate a little bit. And rounding out our pod, Dan is running his Brudiclad Telcor Engineer deck. Brudiclad is four generic mana, although rarely costs that much. A blue and a red for a legendary artifact creature, Artificer, who is 4-4. Four, four. Not only does they give all the creature tokens haste, they also state that at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 blue mere artifact creature token. You may then choose a token you control, and if you do, each other token you control becomes a copy of of said tokens so this is a token strategy deck again uh, this time however seeking to make as many little tokens as possible in one big token 
and then turn all of the little tokens into copies of that big token. It's a wonderful sort of factory style deck that's great to watch when it gets going. One I really enjoy uh, seeing across the table. Some key cards from it include uh, Sahili's Artistry, which allow even more token generation, and then cards like Padim, Console of Innovation, keep those tokens safe with Hexproof. This deck is based on the exquisite uh, Invention Precon deck, uh, piloted by Sahili the Gifted, and is a really nice example of how you can take those Precon decks, change a few things around, and really make it your own. So with all four decks introduced, Let's begin. So John gets us underway by drawing for turn and playing a forest. Amelie draws and plays a scoured barons, gaining a point of life. I draw for turn, which I'm reliably informed is the best part of magic, play a swamp and pass. Dan draws and plays a mountain, he then taps the mountain for a retrofit of foundry. John plays a command tower for the turn for his land and then plays an arbor elf, which will nicely untap his forests, or at least one of them. Amelie untaps and draws and plays a jungle hollow for the turn, gaining a further life. I draw for turn, uh, untippity tap, play a swamp, re tippity tap, and play some swift foot boots. Dan plays an island and taps his island and his mountain and plays an is it signet. It is. It is a signet. Is it? John plays a forest and taps out to play a life crafter's bestiary giving him scry and card draw in green. That seems right. Now he plays a mountain and then an affa protector so that all of her affas are suitably protected, which is nice. I play a swamp and then a returned reveler who is a lovely little zombie satyr who whenever he dies, and I mean whenever I'm playing mono black, it could be more than once after all, um, whenever he dies, the rest of the table must put the top three cards of their library into their graveyard, which is delightful with Sir Conrad. So Dan draws for turn and plays an island. He then plays an Ethereum sculptor so that all of his artifacts are going to be cheaper. He then pays some mana via his is it signet, it is, you know, um, to activate the Retrofitter Foundry and generate a servo token. John for draws for turn and plays a forest. He then taps out and plays a Mina in Den, meaning he can now play an additional land per turn. Plays another forest, uses that forest to draw a card, paying for the one via his Life Crafter, life crafter Bestiary. That's not easy to say, you know, and that's uh, his value. Amelie plays a Plains for the turn and then plays a Vampire Envoy. And then perhaps missing that I have a blocker swings the Aether Protector at me. I block with Returned Reveler and they bounce off each other. But hey, the Aether Protector is a Vigi boy, so got away with one there perhaps. I draw for turn and play a Swamp. Um, and that's about it and say go, but... I'm quite confident in what I've got in my hand, so I'm just trying to look small. Don't hurt me. So Dan activates his Rube Goldberg-like device of a deck, very appropriate for Brooder Clads, and plays a Mountain for the turn. He then uses that mana to play a Sahili the Gifted, ticks her up one to create a Servo token, and then uses some more mana and the Retrofitter Foundry to turn one of those servo tokens into a Thopter. Lovely. That did stuff. So at the beginning of his turn, John uses his Lifecraster Bestiary to scry. He then plays an Evolving Wilds and immediately cracks it, finding a mountain which comes into play tapped. He then makes use of his forests in his command tower to play a Domri Anarch of Bolas, giving all of his creatures plus one, plus zero. And then upticks the um, the Planeswalker, taps the Arbor Elf, and brings in his Commander Rada. A lot just happened. John then swings Mina and Den and the hasty girl Grand Warlord Rada at Amelie, who due to Domri and Ark of Bolas all have plus one, plus zero. Amelie takes nine damage to the face. That's a real amount of damage. Amelie misses her land drop for the turn and perhaps reeling little from the attack, decides to consolidate her forces and says go. I untap and play a swamp. I now have enough swamps for Sir Conrad the Grime, Sir Conrad the Wall of Text, Sir Conrad the Radioactive, Sir Conrad the Not at All, Sir Christopher Lee on a horse. I love this commander. 
So Dan plays an island for the turn and then makes use of Sahili to upticker so that his next spell cast is reduced by the amount of artifacts he has. He has a lot. It makes use of his Izzet token to bring in Brudeclad, his commander. The Retrofitter Foundry then makes a 4-4 Construct. There's a lot going on this turn. Um, he then has enough mana to cast Piers Revolution, which is on screen now. At the beginning of his combat step, he makes a 2-1 Mir token, and then of all of his little tokens, become 4-4 four, four Constructs. That, I like that. Like, I don't have a, I have Brudeclad. I don't have a Brudeclad deck, but it's nice to see what it does. Like it. He then doesn't swing at anyone, which makes Amelie very cross and amuses me no end. So at the beginning of turn six, John makes use of Lifecrafter's Bestiary to scry one, and then drops a Timber Gorge as his land for the turn. Moving straight to combat, he hits Amelie in the face with Rada, continuing the onslaught. She takes four points of damage due to Domri being on the board, and John generates a suitable amount of mana as a result. He then moves into his second main phase, casting Verdant Force, so that at the beginning of each player's upkeep, He's going to get himself a Sapperling token. Lovely. At the beginning of Amelie's activation, John gets himself a Sapperling token. Amelie, in turn, then plays an Overgrown Tomb, paying the two life so that it doesn't come into play tapped. She makes use of that mana to bring in her general, ge uh, her commander, or general, I guess. Yeah, general works, her general Tazri, and uses her ability to fetch up a Beast Caller Savant. At the beginning of my activation, John gets himself a Saproling token. Oh, I play a Swamp for the turn and use mana to do two things. One, to attach Swiftfoot boots to Sir Conrad. And secondly, to enchant Sir Conrad with Thyresis so that all of his damage from this point onwards is Infect damage. Lovely. I then make use of his Pay 1 and a Black ability to make the entire table mill one card from the library into their graveyard. Amongst them is one creature, so everyone else at the table takes one point of infect damage. I have now assembled, in my mind, all of the pieces I need to close out this game. It's just a case now of doing it. I then swing the zombie satyr at John in an effort really just to make it to, to bait him to try and block it and kill it so that the entire table has to mill three cards from their library into their graveyard. He doesn't fall for it and takes a singular point of damage. And I say go. So at the beginning of Dan's activation, John gets himself a sapperling. Uh, Sahili then upticks for one, and with seven artifacts on the table, Dan gets a mere battle sphere for free. So as well as the mere battle sphere, he gets three mere tokens onto the table, and then one mere. Uh, he then casts Mirror Maid, targeting the mere battle sphere, getting a further three mere tokens, and then one mere. Yes, I'm going to do that every time. He then makes use of the Retrofitter Foundry to make himself a Servo Token. And then in the beginning of his combat step, Brudeclad turns all of these tokens into Mears, presumably to power the Battle Spheres. He then swings for nobody and passes the turn, thankfully. So at the beginning of John's turn 7, he gets himself a Sap Rolling Token and also scries thanks to Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Very happy with the result, he draws for turn and casts Wilderness Reclamation, which is an awful lot like Seedborn Muse, except it doesn't take all of the money you've earned from your paper round this week to be able to afford it. He then down ticks Domri by two, making Verdant Force attack Brudeclad. Brudeclad explodes into a cloud of mechanical parts. At the end of this turn, due to Wilderness Reclamation, all of John's lands untap, and then at the beginning of Amelie's, he gets himself a Saprilling token. Lots of decks beginning to work now. Um, Amelie casts Cultivate, putting an island into play tapped and revealing a forest and putting it into her hand. She then attacks jo Dan sorry, with uh, General Tazri, who blocks with a mere battle sphere. Amelie puts Tazri into her graveyard, and everyone at the table takes a point of infect damage. Yay! So, at the beginning of my turn, John creates himself a Sapperling token. That's okay, that's fine. You have your little army of plants, my friend. I have a fella on a horse. So I cast uh, Dragmore Salvage as my land for the turn. I then tap my mana and bring in a flash 
bag marauder requiring everyone at the table to sacrifice one creature so dan sacrifices a mere john a sapling amelie a vampire envoy and me the returned reveler so that is four creatures hitting the graveyard everyone takes four points of infect damage bringing the infect total to six each because returned reveler has hit has died each player must then put the top three cards of their grave library into their graveyard so that's a total of 12 cards being milled around the table from this a total of five creatures are placed into everyone's graveyards bringing the infect total to that magical number of 10 and everyone dies to poison simultaneously which is nice so all that remains is for me to enter the result into the homunculus's big book of magic, chapter one, taken by Sir Conrad the Grim. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and thank you for making it this far. If you have enjoyed it, please do let me know in the comments below. And hopefully this pilot has been a great success and there'll be more videos from us again in the future.